I just don't like that they are giving advice to people who I feel like are already at jeopardy for being taken advantage of. It's like a form of manipulation. And I think that a lot of the rise of femininity coaching is also linked to there being a recession. This is all they're gonna see. All they're gonna see is your hair. They're not gonna be focused on you, okay? So the hair should be simple and sleek. Men with money want you to fit into their environment and big curls and braids don't fit in. I don't think people realize the consequences of severely manipulating yourself and changing yourself for another person because a lot of times when you severely change yourself for another person to be liked by a man or to be liked by somebody who can financially support you, it is really hard to go back to who you were before that. Sometimes it don't make no sense. Does it really have to? There is nothing I Hi, welcome to Mayowa's world. Hi y'all, welcome to Mayowa's world. My name is Mayowa and on my platform, I like to talk about colorism, texturism, featureism. Today we are going to be talking about texturism and why a lot of femininity coaches hate natural hair. So my goal today, if y'all see me wearing this exact outfit in three videos, is because I am trying to make three videos and upload it within this week. So today's topic was actually inspired by a poll I did in my community section on YouTube where I was asking which topic people wanted to see me talk about first. And I'm so happy, like, I'm trying to engage more in the community section because it actually helps me with ideas. So if you have any ideas that you would like for me to talk about, please leave it in the comments and I'll try and get to it. A lot of femininity coaches claim to be helping women become more feminine, but I honestly think a lot of femininity coaches' vision of femininity is just becoming white women. Most men do not like curly hair. They like long, loose waves or straight. Curly hair is too big, it's too much. It takes away from your beauty. If you spent an hour in the mirror, do your makeup, and then you have this massive curly curliness going on, they're not gonna see none of this. So a little background is that our natural hair is masculinized by mainstream society. So people often think that wearing your natural hair, especially if it is 4C or a very kinky type, is either childish or childlike or similar to a man or mannish. Um, your natural hair is good for church programs. Your natural <laughs> hair is good for when you want to pick your kids at school. Oh, wow. Don't bring your natural <laughs> hair to my event. But why would I want to wear a nice as dress, expensive dress, mm -hmm. expensive ears? Mm. At least I would do ponytail. I think people think it's childish or childlike because that is kind of the only time where it is socially acceptable to wear your natural hair, which is when you are a kid. And even so, we are seeing the rise of like children and babies being put in lace fronts and stuff like that. And then often people think that it's masculine because it often whatever feature naturally grows out of black people somehow becomes masculine. Like if your skin is dark, somehow that is becoming masculine. If your hair is kinky, somehow that's now becoming masculine. So like it's masculinized. And it's really problematic to associate anything that naturally grows from your body as innately masculine or innately feminine even so. Yeah, and you can see that blackness is masculinized because a lot of times black men get an overrepresentation of blackness. Like you can see, if you like look at a movie, you will see a lot of black men or you will see black men have representation, but that same complexion of women will not be the same way. Like women will often be light skin compared to a man being dark skin. And that creates this like natural masculization of blackness. So a lot of femininity coaches see that adhering to Eurocentric standards of beauty is like the best way to survive this system. They'll tell you like, if you want to be married, get a wig. If you want a man to buy you things, straighten your hair. If you want to be loved, become skinny. Like they're just telling you all these things to essentially just change yourself. When you don't wear makeup, you have the homely look, the maid look, or the around the way girl look. Which category do you fall in? I think a lot of femininity coaches take advantage of the insecurities that a lot of black women have um, because our femininity is constantly in question due to the society that we live in. And take, for example, whenever black women wear long nails, we were demonized for it and it was called ghetto and it was called classless. And then whenever black women wear their natural hair, it was considered masculine. But then when they wore a weave, it was considered too um, superficial and it looked fake and it was like horse hair. And then when they wear a perm, um, it was like, oh, your hair is too thin. So it's like every single time that black women have tried to like exert femininity, it's been like made fun of, a mockery of, which is why so many like comedians 
enjoy dressing up as black women to make a mockery of it and to kind of liken it to being a man in a dress, you know, or a man. A lot of femininity coaches benefit off of you being the exception, like you existing and being so different than the rest of them that you get picked, right? Because the goal is that if you work so hard, you can be different. A lot of the advice that these women have to give you is often just repackaged S E work. And I feel like the advice works if you are trying to make money and you're doing it as a business. But I feel like if you're someone who's actually desiring love or to feel seen or to feel accepted, that kind of advice literally is the antithesis of that because ultimately the, the foundation of femininity coaching a lot of times is to get you to completely change yourself so much in validation of someone else. And the reason that that is the foundation is because you can make the most money from people when they feel insecure about who they are or when they need advice outside of who they are as a person. I would never eat a plate that looked like this. You could have paid me a million dollars to do that to myself. Mm. Oh my God. Because I deserve better than that. That's mm. low vibration. Yeah, because it's a lot of people that just let people give them what they want them to have, mm -hmm. and they accept it. Mm -hmm. And Storm is teaching me right now. Yeah, yeah. Cold Storm is teaching me don't accept what they put on your. Plate. So you can make more money because they're making you're making them uh, change their hair, which is expensive. You're making them change their face, which is expensive. You're making them lose weight, which is expensive. Like these, all these expenses that end up. Um, adding up because you're changing yourself. This is all they're going to see. All they're going to see is your hair. They're not going to be focused on you. Okay. So the hair should be simple and sleek. Men with money want you to fit into their environment and big curls and braids don't fit in. A lot of this advice like of assimilation isn't always going to be the thing that's like going to get you to shine and get you to stand out. Telling somebody of their natural hair, they need to hide it. A lot of people who, uh, kind of like the differentness of things will like you because you are different than the rest. And I've even seen advice from Shira Seven saying to people that if you just kind of hang around girls who are uglier than you, it will like boost how you look. So another way is to hang around people that make you look better. Shoot, there's no other confidence builder than to hang around people that are not on your level. <laughs> okay. And it's like, you are training people to be the ultimate meanest girls ever just to be able to chase a man. Like it's an ultimate form of pick -meism. And I think a lot of these like femininity coaches started in response to the Kevin Samuels and in response to the podcast bros who are incredibly misogynistic. And then it went into a really extreme side of like, you know, use men for the money. And I'm not against like that concept, but I feel like, you have to be honest with the kind of person you are, right? If you are someone who wants to marry for love, if you are somebody who wants to be cared for through all the stages of your life as you get older, you want somebody who really sees you for the worth that you have to give, chasing someone specifically for money may not be the best thing for you. But if you know that is not what you want, you specifically only want money, you don't care about what they do for work, you don't care about how they treat you, you don't care about, if they're gonna leave you for somebody younger in like 10 years, if you don't care about that stuff, then I think the advice, you know what I mean? The advice works, but then at that time, that is that is getting into the territory of like, it's it's a money, it's a, a partnership around money. That's a different kind of thing. And you gotta, be, you gotta be built differently to be able to be someone who's specifically only chasing the money, right? Like also too, I feel like when I speak about how I don't like the works of Share Seven and other femininity coaches, people think I'm trying to say that you need to be with somebody who's completely broke and doesn't take care of you. I'm saying if you center care at the foundation of your love with someone, somebody who's caring for you, and if caring for you means helping you financially, helping you mentally, helping you physically, that is all within the concept of care. Care does not mean uh, not being able to provide. Like care also means being able to provide, but that is not exclusive to very, very wealthy people. A lot of y'all like, and it's funny to me because a lot of these very, very wealthy people will work in industries that's actively to the detriment of your own people. A lot of them will work in like fracking industries. We'll be doing things in oil that's like mad colonial. We'll be doing things in like, uh, what is it? Uh, buying up, uh, gentrifying areas and stuff like this, buying up land. And to d date these people, you are also co-signing these people. So like, if you're gonna be in these arrangements where money is at the root of your love, just know that like you are 
aligning with people. Another thing I don't like, another thing I don't like about femininity coaching is that they make spending time with someone that you don't like seem like it's not work. If you are doing SE work and you're spending time with someone who you wouldn't want to normally spend time with, but because there's money, you're spending time with them. That is a form of work. So making it seem like this form of femininity is, you know, I would rather not work and do that and stay at home. And you are actually always working. At least if you're clocking in doing this kind of work, you have a time that you finish and you go to bed and you lay and you do your own thing. But you're actually constantly now in it. You're performing every single day of your life. And I don't think that's a worth a lot. Personally, like I feel like that's really intense. One thing I've noticed with femininity discourse is this idea of work and like what's considered work. And it's interesting because fighting for political gains is considered masculine and hard work, but somehow negotiating a man to give you an allowance is also a form of hard work. It's just different kinds of work. Personally, if I had to braid my hair down, wear a wig, wear heels, force myself into an uncomfortable dress and sit by a bar to wait for a man to have a conversation that I don't really wanna have, personally, I find that very hard work. And I feel like a lot of these movements are in response to labor expected on black women. But I think you can reserve yourself and still be politically aware and pace which issues you wanna advocate for. Because a lot of these coaches think that knowing about oppression or understanding oppressive struggles or systems is a form of, of, of work and labor when actually every form of existing under capitalism is going to be work and labor. It's just what you want to opt into and what you want to opt out of. Like I wouldn't want to wake up to someone who I don't want to be with every single day consistently. I feel like you can make a lot of money just doing that as an actual business than to do that as like a deep thing for love. But I feel like a lot of these women are actually just selling this dream because they need money. And it's funny because they end up working, teaching people. <laughs> so it's not even like they get to do the job of like not working. They're still working. Um, they're just selling your insecurities back to you to make them money. And then hoping that maybe you'll do the same thing because they chase you to be, you have to be the exception to be able to fit into this dynamic. And as somebody who's really tried to do these kind of, I've tried in my younger years to do the sprinkle, sprinkle stuff. Sprinkle, sprinkle is real and all until you get into a situation where you actually need support, like you need help. Like something bad has happened and you can't really go to the police because you're going to the police against somebody who has a lot of money, a lot of power. So then what do you do? Do you know what I mean? Like what are some like actual practical things you do if you're in situations where you need help because you've got to get out of the situation, but you don't have enough money to stand on your own two feet because this person is supporting you for money. These are, these are all the situations that I'm like, there's a lot of holes in it. I know I can see through it. And like, I just don't like that they are giving advice to people who I feel like are already at jeopardy for being taken advantage of. It's like a form of manipulation. And I think that a lot of the rise of femininity coaching is also linked to there being a recession. Like you will see femininity, femininity. I saw a femininity coach course. I didn't even know there was like an online course that you can take, but it's like, if your femininity includes like telling people to change themselves and doing more work to not be themselves, like I'm so sorry, it's just not feminine. It's just not, it's just not, you're just. <sighs> it seems with a lot of femininity coaches, being picked to be married seems like the highest form of womanhood and femininity. And I find it funny because it doesn't seem like their form of femininity can exist outside of the di desires of men. So then my question is if femininity is in response to men, is it actually real? Personally, I don't like to think in the binaries of femininity and masculinity because if I need to be coached to be feminine, I don't really think I subscribe to femininity. If it's so innate and inside of me, why does it take so many courses, lessons, and changing of myself to be able to reach it? I think a lot of people who are femininity coaches see themselves as being able to beautify your way out of oppression. And you know, people like to have this conversation around how like different hairstyles attract different people. And I agree that it's true. Like when I had a weave, different people approached me to when I had freeform locks or when I had my natural afro or when my hair was shorter, da, da, da. like all that stuff is very true. But does that mean that you should completely change what you like to attract someone? Like, I don't think people realize the consequences of severely manipulating yourself and changing yourself for another person. Because a lot of times when you severely change yourself for another person to be liked by a man or to be liked by somebody who can financially support you, it is really hard to go back to who you were before that. And if you're like, it's also going to be so easy to keep changing yourself and keep becoming someone unrecognizable. And that is scary. That is really, really scary. 
So I say discernment. But anyway, y'all, thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you made it to the end, this is the look. I'm gonna have the look, this look in all three videos, but you guys can tell me in all the different videos what you like the most about the look. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.